My wife's betrayal wasn't just an affair. It was a carefully orchestrated deception that turned my world upside down. She not only broke the trust we'd built over the years, but brought another man into our lives. A man so bold that he didn't even bother hiding his influence over her. To make matters worse, she got pregnant and the child wasn't mine. When I first posted about this on Reddit, I did so as a way to vent and process the situation. But when I showed her the post, her reaction was explosive. She wasn't remorseful. She was enraged. She acted as though my attempt to express my pain had somehow tarnished her reputation. The anger she unleashed that day ignited one of the worst arguments we'd ever had. I knew our kids, behind their closed doors, could hear every word. After that massive fight, she eventually went silent, and for a moment I hoped it was a sign that she was reflecting on everything. Weeks later, she came to me with an apology, but not for the betrayal or the affair. She apologized for something trivial, not taking my advice about our children's pet rabbit, which had died. She admitted she couldn't stand the thought of being wrong about something so small. I, wanting to repair what was left of our marriage, apologized as well, thinking this could be the start of a fresh chapter. I even suggested marriage counseling, hoping it would give us tools to mend the cracks in our relationship. But she dismissed the idea entirely. Nothing's wrong with us, she said, as if our issues were all in my head. For a while... I tried to convince myself that maybe she was right. Maybe we could move on. But then my eldest daughter, with a trembling voice and tears in her eyes, came to me. She was clutching my hand, like it was the only thing keeping her grounded. Her words shattered whatever illusions I had left. Daddy, I need to tell you something, she said, her voice quivering. She explained how her mother had bribed her into silence, but she couldn't keep the secret anymore. Mommy has a special friend, she whispered, her shame evident. My heart broke for her. She was just a child, but she had the courage to tell me the truth. Looking back, I realized there had been signs all along. My wife's temper had grown shorter, and her behavior had become increasingly erratic. She'd started picking fights over trivial matters, hurling insults about things that hadn't mattered in years, like the fact that I used to smoke. But I'd ignored it, hoping it was temporary. That night, my daughter's confession left me unable to dismiss my suspicions any longer. I decided I needed proof, so I installed hidden cameras in our home. I told myself that if I was wrong, no one would ever need to know. But I wasn't wrong. The footage quickly confirmed my worst fears. My wife had been sneaking her special friend into our home, a man she had once mentored at work. He was ten years younger than her, someone I vaguely remembered meeting before she quit her job to become a stay-at-home mom. I never imagined she would cross a line like this. She even went as far as bribing our children with treats and toys to ensure they stayed silent about her affair. Watching the footage, I saw this man casually rubbing her pregnant stomach, and the truth hit me like a freight train. The child she was carrying wasn't mine, it was his. Disbelief gave way to disgust and heartbreak. Everything I thought I knew about my wife and our marriage crumbled in an instant. I turned to my sister and her husband for support, and together we started piecing together a plan. The betrayal wasn't just hers. It felt like a direct attack on the foundation of our family. And now, I had to figure out how to protect my children and myself from the fallout. It began with a suspicion I couldn't shake. For months, my wife's behavior had grown colder, her excuses more frequent, and her girl's nights out increasingly suspicious. Unable to sit idly by, I took a step I never thought I would. I had her movements tracked using a GPS device. It didn't take long to uncover the truth. One night, she met a man. My investigators didn't just confirm the meeting. They captured damning video footage. The man was intimately rubbing her belly in a way that left no room for doubt. She wasn't just having an affair. She was building a life with him, something that should have been ours. That moment, watching that video, everything fell into place. All the suspicion, the late nights, the distance, it all pointed to this betrayal. 
When I confronted her, I expected denial, guilt, maybe even an apology. Instead, I got ice. She didn't flinch or attempt to deny it. She hurled excuses at me with chilling detachment. I felt old for too long, she said with a sneer. Then came the knife. You're just too boring. I want my do-over, baby. She admitted it outright. If it hadn't been for my financial stability, she would have left me years ago. Her words hit me like a sledgehammer, but they also brought clarity. This wasn't just an affair. It was a calculated betrayal. If I was going to lose my marriage, I'd do it on my terms. The following weeks were a blur. I wasted no time contacting the best divorce lawyer in town, a man known for his cutthroat approach. I handed him the evidence, videos, timestamps, everything. He grinned as he reviewed it, understanding immediately that my wife's actions weren't just morally reprehensible. They would be legally devastating for her. Living in an at-fault divorce state meant that her affair wasn't just an emotional betrayal. It was a weapon I could use in court. When the divorce papers were delivered to our doorstep, the fallout was as dramatic as I'd anticipated. She went ballistic. The kids were at school, and I was working from home when the sheriff handed her the documents. Seconds later, she stormed into my office, eyes blazing with fury. She launched into a tirade of accusations, calling me controlling, unloving, and anything else she could think of. Finally, she resorted to threats. I'll tell everyone you're abusive, she spat. I'll get you fired. You'll lose everything. I didn't flinch. Calmly, I told her to do whatever she wanted because I had every angle covered. Her face went pale when I mentioned the do-over baby. I laid it all out. The affair, the lies, the new life she was building behind my back. For a moment, she was stunned into silence. Her desperation reached new lows. In a last-ditch effort, she grabbed her phone and called the police, screaming that I was some kind of monster and that she feared for her life. When the officers arrived, I was ready. I calmly invited them in, showed them the video evidence, and explained the situation. The officers watched in silence, their expressions hardening as the truth became undeniable. When they turned to her, their disappointment was palpable. Her lies crumbled, and as the cuffs were placed around her wrists, her bravado dissolved into whimpering pleas. She begged them to let her go, but no one was listening anymore. After she was taken away, I didn't waste a moment. I shut down every account in my name and stopped all payments into our joint account. If she wanted freedom, she could have it, but not at my expense. She could rely on her special friend now. For twenty years, I thought I had married the love of my life. But as I stood there, watching her being driven away, I realized I was saying goodbye to a stranger. She had never truly been the person... I thought she was. The woman I had loved, the life we had built, it had all been a lie. But now, I was free. And this time, the terms were mine.